But how do you not end up like X? How do you not end up like Peep? How do you, like... You learn from people's mistakes. Um, you learn from people's downfalls. Before Juice World would clock in over 10 million followers on Instagram and Twitter, surpass a billion views on his personal YouTube channel, and be booked to headline Rolling Loud in Los Angeles this December. I'm mad at making ass a rap back that don't believe me, you can pop like a blackhead. I spit heat fast like a crackhead. Thinking that you win it, but you don't know this. Focus, now nah, I got ADD now, nah, swimming like locusts. Who is this? Making hand signs like he deaf or something. That's okay, I'll be on the beat, spinning fast like Chris left or something. Before Lucid Dreams, a song that reportedly was completed within 15 minutes would peak at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and would go on to be certified five times platinum, becoming one of the most popular songs of 2018. I rock oh. supreme, that's that box logo, promo. Oh no, here's the dude, that's no joke. Right, joker shit. though, I got that joker flow to make you hope you know. Who is this? Eight, Do you exist? Seven. Nah, not to me, I'm R. Kelly. You can get the piss. Ooh. Before Juice World would get hit with a $15 million lawsuit by now defunct Florida rock group Yellow Card, a song that he already paid out 85% in royalties to Sting. Now in regards to all this, he humbly replied, lost millions, made millions. The song impacted too many people in a good way for me to be upset over it. There's always more money to be made and I will make it so. Now I've seen a ton of artists come up over the years, but either I was just getting on the internet or these stars, they had made it before I started the show. And I felt that I had missed witness to some parts of their journey. Now Juice World, he is an exception. Now I witnessed this man's career from start to finish and could truly say he was a one of a kind talent. Now he wasn't in the SoundCloud freshman class, but he came up a few years later and there were a ton of things that separated him from his counterparts. Now for one, the music, he was emo, and he grew up on rock and he showed a great appreciation for a wide variety of genres and he was a self-described old soul. Now he also rapped about depression, addiction, and heartbreak, which are themes often overlooked in hip hop. On top of all this, well he was world famous, but had decided to lock it down in a committed relationship. Now our prayers, they go out to his girlfriend and his family. Now the dude was an all around lovable guy and at 21 years of age, he had lived more than most of us ever will. Now with that said, he also had a long history of drug use. I would tell myself to stay as far away from drugs as possible. Now in countless interviews, Juice World, he shared his own awareness and fears of drug use and of dying at a young age, which makes it all the more tragic for the world to lose such a bright and talented young man in an era where we've already lost too many already. It's with a heavy heart that we're bringing you this video in tribute to Juice World 999 in a video we have titled Gone But Not For Gone. Now when a star passes away, especially one who's reached mainstream success so young like Juice World, well the entire world stops when reacting to the news. Now I've received thousands of requests in my DMs and in the comments to get this video done. Now if you're a longtime fan or you just want to know more about this man, well we hope you find these videos done with the utmost respect. Now please share your condolences in the comments down below. And by now you already know who I am, so let's just get into the video. You know what? You want to know something funny? I knew this picture was going to resurface one day. I knew it was. I didn't know when it was going to come, but I knew it was coming. Juice World 999 was born Jared Higgins on December 2nd, 1998 in the windy city of Chicago, Illinois. And a year after his birth, well, his family, they moved to the south suburbs in an area known as Homewood. In one of the few still public posts about his childhood from his birthday last year, well, the caption, it reads, Still got the same devious facial expression as I look at the world. Blessed to see 20, pray to see many more. Damn, yeah, that hits hard and uh, we're just getting started. Now his parents, they split up when he was still a toddler and from there on out, well, him and his older brother, they would only see Pops from time to time. Now he lived with his mom, but he had a key to his dad's place. But for the most part, it was a one parent upbringing. In fact, he told Billboard, I didn't have a man giving me no type of guidance. My father wasn't in my life like that. In a throwback photo of him, and I believe the other guy is his brother, well, the caption it read, Polo and some cheap trues, me and my mom shared a room, clean shoes, only two pairs, ain't know what to do. Cuzzo drove a Jetta, good condition, with no leg room. Two sad songs later, got a pocket full of dead dudes. Now he would credit his mom regularly for her hard work in raising him, and she was very religious and forbid him from listening to rap music. He told Complex, My mom was a real conservative on some old hardcore Christian sh**. I grew up around a lot of like, I grew up in a Christian household. Uh huh, so yeah, I feel you, man. Me too. Stayed playing gospel music and stuff. Yeah. Then we learned to play the piano at a young age, and he followed this up by learning to play the guitar, the trumpet, and the drums, which he initially fell in love with through Guitar Hero. 
Now we also enjoyed Tony Hawk Pro Skater and through video games like this, well he was first introduced to rock music. He found an early interest in artists like Panic at the Disco, Black Sabbath, Fall Out Boy, Billy Idol, Paramore, Black Veil Bride, Senses Fail, Bullet for My Valentine and more. Bro what? Yes, hell yes bro. This is like one of my biggest influences. Like he's, my mom put me on him, she loves Billy Idol. Like. This is raw as fuck. Now growing up with access to the internet, it allowed a young Jared to explore a plethora of new music. For Weird Al Yankovic's parody of Smells Like Nirvana, well that opened up the doors for him to fall in love with the real thing and start smelling some teen spirit for himself. In the fifth grade, he developed his first hardcore crush on a girl who was obsessed with emo music. Now naturally, this only enhanced his interest in the genre and to connect with the lyrics and songs about heartbreak, angst, depression, and more. Now that same year, he was also diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and his mom, she put him on Ritalin and Vyvanse. Now this is something he later regretted. He told Vulture, I look back at it and I'm like, wow, that was not okay. I'm in fifth grade. What am I doing taking Vyvanse and Ritalin? How is a fifth grader supposed to act? Now against his mother's wishes, young Jared, he began to discover more urban sounds introduced to him by his brother and his cousin. Now he started heavily listening to rap artists like Jeezy, Gucci Mane, Big Sean, and Lil Wayne, but his personal interest, they gravitated more towards artists from his native Chicago. This included Chief Keef, Lil Durk, and Kanye West's 808s and Heartbreaks, while it quickly became one of his all-time favorite albums. When I moved, I would go back, and as my cousins grew up, they were older than me, but as they grew up into their teen years, they used to listen to, um, you know, Weezy, Gucci yeah. Man, um, yeah, man, you know, stuff like that. Young Jeezy was an inspiration, mm -hmm. Gucci Man. I mean, when Chance the Rapper came out, that's an inspiration. Most Shout out to Chance. No one be long before he would begin experimenting with other drugs not prescribed by a doctor, but instead those he was learning about through his music. Hearing that music at such a young age, I was trying to sip lean in sixth grade. Mm. Listening to Dirty Sprite 1. Slowly but surely, he began to freestyle for his friends by the sixth or seventh grade, and he was writing his own lyrics and spitting rhymes at lunchtime. Kid, I spit heat fast like a crackhead. Thinking that you want it, but you don't know this. Focus, now I got ADD, now I'm swarming like locusts. Who is this? Making hand signs like he deaf or something. He attended Homewood Flossmore High School, and it was there in his sophomore year that he began to take his rapping seriously. He told Elevator Magazine, I used to just do that freestyling for fun, but then my friends started telling me I could do this for real. So I started taking it seriously when I was about 16. Now high school had also opened up the door for new experiences. While his friends were smoking weed, he began dabbling and taking perks and zants. Now these are drugs which at the time, Juice, he admitted they weren't even cool. He just liked the way that they made him feel. I ran into some perks as my freshman year. This was calling me and my homie Clux, right? Two years later, three years later, Future dropped 56 nights. By the way, Future <laughs> is the GOAT. Future dropped 56 nights. This is hit my phone like, will you get all them perks from them Zans? Like, cause of some music. Now initially he rapped under the name Juice the Kid and he was inspired by one of the greats, as he explains it. I used to have a juice cut, like you know Tupac from the movie Juice. That was also around the time I started rapping for real and I was just thinking about names and I was like, I'ma go by Juice, since I got the juice cut. It was just corny enough to work. Honestly, I'm not even sure where the word world came from. I was just trying to be creative. Now Juice the Kid, he also got to work putting on shows for his peers, with his first ever live performance taking place at a Chicago rec center. Now the crowd, which was comprised of classmates and friends, well they were receptive to his music and for his efforts he earned $100 for his performance. Now he also gave the odd interview to his friends at a school who were starting a radio show, and this gave him his first opportunity to freestyle to a live audience. Freestyle game crazy, I'm finna make it insane. Insane. Couple words off the brain, switch it to the membrane. Mm. I shoot threes like Steve Nash, yes boy, I straight drain. People say I'm crazy, but my bars going insane. You hear me on the radio, yeah. spitting radio waves. Woo! I told you, homie, nothing would ever be the same like the Drake. Drake. People hate. I said to their face, get it straight, we can't relate. Relate like belated. You run up on me, that's okay, because I ain't even complaining. Ugh. I'm the man around here, no graduation. Run up on me, that's okay. I'll make it rain on the beat, so I guess on the track it catch precipitation. Now I gotta remind you that he had to do all this without uttering a single swear word. Now his initial recordings he made via his iPhone and he began uploading these to SoundCloud back in 2015. Now tracks they included, Make It There, Lost My Mind, and his very first release which was Forever, that now boasts over 4.7 million streams. Now with his music career starting to prove promising, well he had little interest in going on to college. My grades were up in high school and it was time like to you know for colleges to start looking at motherfuckers 
and I wasn't on any like sports teams or none of that. So I'm like, bro, what the f am I gonna do after high school? Like, you know, and I was just, I'd be sitting in my room just going crazy over this shit. Throughout high school, he kept recording and releasing music, but his dedication would take time to pay off. Now he actually ended up working at a factory for a short period of time, but he quickly realized that that wasn't the type of future he wanted for himself, and he was eventually fired. Now speaking on this short stint, he stated, Bro, that shit was horrible, I hated it, 9 to 5 wasn't for me at all. The people were tripped out and it made me sad because there were people there that have been doing that shit for 20 plus years. Now during his senior year of high school, one of Juice's videos, it ended up getting 10,000 views. This was the moment when he first thought he had made it. He began working with producer Nick Mira after joining the collective internet money. Now Juice said that Mira was one of the first people to help him improve as an artist and together they created the track Too Much Cash. Now the song that would change everything for Juice World of course was Lucid Dreams, a song that was recorded within 15 minutes and lyrics that are now known the world over. Now first Juice, he had no idea that the song, it bared similarities to other works of art that would cause him legal troubles once money started being made. Now speaking on this, he told Vulture, My mom told me that the song sampled Sting, so I went back and listened to his version. I haven't heard from Sting, but he said publicly that Lucid Dreams was a beautiful interpretation of Shape of My Heart. Now uploaded to SoundCloud the track, it immediately found an audience with over 2 million streams. Now it also got Juice some attention from Chicago's very own little Bibby. Now Bibby was the first to go all in, taking on the then relatively unknown artist's career to the next level. He put money in and resources where his mouth was, and he signed Juice to Grade A Productions. From there, there was a bidding war amongst various labels, with Interscope ultimately coming out on top with a reported $3 million deal. In 2017, the world got Juice World's three-song EP, Nothing's Different, with the official release of Lucid Dreams, All Girls Are The Same. And from there, well, he was working with the likes of Lil Uzi Vert, Cole Bennett at Lyrical Lemonade, and he would perform on Jimmy Kimmel. Now, it wasn't long before he was getting nominated for BET Award for Best New Hip Hop Artist and an MTV Video Music Award. He won a Billboard Music Award for Top New Artist, he toured with Nicki Minaj, and put out two studio albums, Goodbye and Good Riddance and Death Race for Love. There was also the track Legends, which is likely going to go down in history now following his passing. Now in the track, off his 2018 Too Soon EP, well he paid tribute to Lil Peep and XXX, where he rapped. What's the 27 Club? We ain't making it past 21. Now he also rapped about his own drug use, and he called himself the Codeine Cobain. Now on his 2018 track, Waiting for the Drugs to Hit Me, while well, Juice rapped, coding in my cup, I carry it to every city. Now while doing interviews, Juice, he was open to talk about his own history of drug use and he was vocal about his own strides in sobriety. I would tell myself to stay as far away from drugs as possible. In a 2019 interview with NME Magazine, well, the article's writer, Jordan Bissett, he noted that Juice World was drinking a homemade concoction of Sprite mixed with Listerine. Now in that interview, he stated, Drugs can ruin your whole life if they don't kill you. They can leave you in a trance for the rest of your life. Most effing rappers rap about getting high and feeling great, but I talk about the good side and the bad side, just to shed some light on the negative side. On December 2nd of 2019, Juice had celebrated having made it to his 21st birthday. Now after having those lyrics in his track Legend about making it to 21, I'm assuming this was some kind of accomplishment. Then on December 8th, 2019, while flying a private jet from Los Angeles to Chicago, well, Juice was seen in the last known video footage of him alive, and he actually looked happy and lighthearted. What we know now is that the feds, they had been watching the young rapper and his entourage for over a month, and they were tipped off by the pilot about the possibility of guns on board the plane. Now, what appears to have been an act to avoid charges of possession, well, Juice World, he injected as many as several unknown pills inside his body. Now, this inevitably resulted in a seizure, and despite paramedics' efforts to revive him, well, he was pronounced dead at 3.14 a.m. in Advocate Christ Medical Center in Oakland, Illinois. Now, a bottle of codeine cough syrup, it was also found on the plane, and 70 pounds of marijuana was stashed away in suitcases. The world woke up Sunday morning to the tragic news, and famous friends and fans took to social media to share their condolences. Now, we've made a video talking about a number of his closest friends' reactions, and we released that yesterday. Now obviously there will be a lot more to this story in the coming days and weeks, but I think I'm going to wrap this one up here on Gone But Not Forgotten. My name is Michael McCrudden, I'm a YouTube historian and we make biography type videos here on The Daily. Thanks for tuning in, please share your positive messages and condolences in the comments down below. That's it for now, bye.